of Bob's stature, we wanted to commend him for his many years of service. And I'm not going to read all the whereases because, frankly, you've heard them all. <laughs> you've heard them all. I mean, it says he went, he, he went to school, made really good grades, and <laughs> he's a wonderful guy. But, it, but, but it's, it's co patroned by most of the members of the House and the Senate, and, and it really is a token on both sides of the aisle of how much Bob meant, the impact that he made, not just here in Arlington, because I think we all feel that and know that but throughout the, the, the state, the Commonwealth. And so I want to thank you for your years. I know you didn't think this was happening, or maybe you did, I don't know. Uh, but, but, um, but this is something that we did for, for uh, former Delegate Brink, our friend, Bob Brink. Thank you for being here, thank you for your years of service. It's a pleasure to know you, and I know this is not goodbye or anything like that. You're still here, you're still an Arlingtonian. Uh, but I did not want you to go any longer being out of the house without us doing something like this for you. You have a lot of friends here who care very much about you. Well, I didn't know this was going to be a Bob Brink roast today. I thought I was just going to get my chance to be a sparkly at, uh, at Patrick's uh, event. But uh, I, I, I can't thank you enough, Pat, for this. I really appreciate it. Um, as um, Mary Margaret and the others have said, I, it's no secret that I loved being in the House of Delegates. Uh, I, I relished, I don't want to say every moment of it, but it was, it was a tremendous, rewarding experience. Uh, I felt like I was having fun and doing a little bit of good, and, uh, and I enjoyed it. And one of the things in the almost year now since I uh, changed my Twitter handle from at Del Brink to at Aging Bob Brink. <laughs> One of the things that, I, that I've been surprised at is given how much I love being in the house, how little I've regretted having left it. I've, I've, had, I've had bangs every now and then, and uh, uh, during the, the legislative session, Governor McAuliffe uh, asked me to come down and, and work on legislation out of his office, and. Uh, I, I, every now and then I'd say, boy, I kind of miss it, and then I'd say, no, I'm not so much. <laughs> part, part of it is uh, how important the work is that I'm, that I'm doing at the aging division, uh, because it's, it's a, the fastest growing segment of the population in Virginia. We have these baby boomers that started in 1946 with uh, uh, me and Cher and Dolly Parton. <laughs> I went all the way to 1964 with Rob Lowe and Sandra Bullock, and just huge numbers of people coming in. And so that the, the work is important. But beyond that, I think one of the reasons I, I have so little regret is because I, I feel that Arlington remains in good hands. Uh, you look at our, our Senate delegation um, with Janet and Barbara Favola and Adam Evans. Every day they're growing in the respect of their colleagues because of their knowledgeability, their commitment, and uh, in, in case uh, you're unaware of it, if the Democrats should take back control of the Senate next year, and there's a, I think there's a very good possibility of that, if they do that, then there's a very good possibility that Janet Howell, a member of the Arlington delegation, is going to be the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, wow. and that's oh, important. Wow. The first one. And so on the, on the Senate side, we have a tremendous team there. On the House side, um, on Tuesday, I hope and am certain that, uh, that the voters of the 45th dele Delegate District are going to elect somebody to replace Rob Krapika that will have the same qualities of, of incisive knowledge and, and tremendous uh, work ethic that, that Rob has shown in his two brief years in the, in the General Assembly. Uh, Alfonso Lopez, there's nobody who shows more passion and commitment. And this year, Alfonso, through that passion and commitment and, and diligence, was able to get funding for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund for the first time in ever. In years and years and years. So, something that Mary Margaret worked so hard on. Um, in the 48th district, uh, my, my successor, Rip Sullivan, shows qualities that I only could uh, could look at and admire uh, rather than being part of. One of them is that he has the enthusiasm 
of somebody who just got there. <laughs> and second, second, he also has the ability, which I never had at all, is the ability to think on his feet and to speak eloquently and articulately right off the bat. Every time I got up there, I had paper in front of me, and I wouldn't deviate from that. And when I did, it wasn't pretty. Rick is a great, great legislator. He's going to be a tremendous, tremendous member of the House of Delegates. I'm very excited about him. And then, then uh, we have my... What's his name? Uh, what's his name here? My, my former neighbor down in the General Assembly building, my uh, district neighbor here in Arlington, Patrick, uh, who is just outstanding. Uh, a couple of, uh, one of the things that I've done in the aging division is to try to get out to all of the local area agencies on aging to visit them. Um, and uh, I've, I'm going to complete that commitment by the end of my first year at the end of this month. And this has meant that I've gone out to the areas of, of Southside and Southwest Virginia that we here in Arlington don't think very much about. And I, I've been struck by what a great job the people in, the, in those areas do given the tremendous challenges that they face. Uh, a, a, an economic base that's been decimated through uh, the loss of manufacturing jobs uh, and uh, a population, especially an aging population, that's been terribly deficient in the health care that they've received and then as they age they have the infirmities of age to deal with also. Uh, and it's one of the one of the aspects of that is the plight of hospitals in those areas. Uh, the, they're on their backs. They, they have tremendous challenges. Uh, some of them, only one out of every five people who show up at their doors actually pay, are able to pay for the services that they receive there. It's a terrible, tough situation that makes the job of the aging division even more difficult. And as I've seen that all the way through Southside and Southwest, I said, I wish that somebody could articulate that, could put that down so that people know in one place what the challenges that we face with rural hospitals. So I opened up my Washington Post yesterday morning, and there is an op-ed by Patrick that lays out the case, that lays out what we face there in ways that are both articulate and forceful and compelling. There is virtually nobody in the General Assembly who knows more about health care policy than Patrick. In the area of social justice, I want to tell you something, for years and years one of the greatest blights on Virginia's uh, conscience has been what, uh, what uh, we did as a matter of state policy in forcibly sterilizing a number of people with intellectual disabilities in the 1910s, 20s, 30s, all the way up into the 60s. It's been something that we've been remiss in doing something about. And year after year on Appropriations Committee, I had people come before us telling the most heartbreaking stories of what the state did to them. And it wasn't until Patrick this year was able to marshal the forces through the argument, through, through the force of his arguments, through the, his ability to articulate a tragic situation that we were able to pay compensation to those individuals. And Patrick deserves a credit for that. So more than anything else, I, I left the General Assembly feeling that we continue to be in good hands. Uh, our, our politics is alive and vibrant. That can be seen through the presence of one, two, three, four, at least out of the five candidates for the county board here today. And, uh, and I'm, I'm glad to see Andrew and Christian and Katie and uh, Peter here today. Uh, and James, if he's around the corner, I'm glad to see you too. Uh, because it, as uh, the, the roasters said, we truly are a family with mutual respect with mutual assistance, with, with ability to collaborate and work together for the common good. That's what we do here in Arlington. That's what I hope we were able to do to a great degree down in Richmond. I enjoyed my years down there. I'm enjoying my years down there now. And I want to thank you all for coming out to support a really great time. Yeah.